Hi, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome to another, another, another episode of Veganish with Dr. Monique. I'm Dr. Monique, and I'm your physician in the kitchen. You know me. I help busy households enjoy healthy eating without impacting their hectic schedules. And on this show, we talk about what it's like to be vegan, vegan ish, kind of what that all means, the ups, the downs, and everything in between. And happy September. Can you, can you, let's just talk wow. about that. September, y'all, like my mother was here today and she was like, you know, Christmas is almost here. I was like, please don't say that. <laughs> but hello, Mr. Ellis, how are you doing today? <laughs> First of all, she said Christmas, like we just skipped like three holidays between. <laughs> she was like, let's just get to the point, Christmas. <laughs> yeah, so I am great. I am joining you all from uh, sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So I'm not at my normal home uh, down here. Celebrating my alma mater, aka FAMU, uh, Florida a &M University, um, and we are playing in the Orange Bo Blossom Classic against Jackson State. So, down here, hanging out with some some college friends and, and enjoying some time. So, well, I, you know, I got you, you know, I, I gotta, I gotta do it, Ellis. You know, I love you, but speaking <laughs> of alma maters, so last weekend a certain school played another certain school. So FAMU visited Chapel Hill. And let's just say we didn't treat them so nice. But Vam, you did not disappoint with the band. I loved it. Actually, we just stuck around. Honestly, I went to see the band. So we left right after halftime. <laughs> I really saw what I saw what I wanted to see. And Sam, you even they taught Carolina some moves. And so if you get the chance to see it on YouTube Ooh. or Instagram, whatever, it was a great halftime show. They came together, they they each performed individually and they, they performed together. And um it was a great show. It was a great show. So we were actually behind. We were on the side with the FAMU band. It was like 280 or something people. It was massive. So uh, great job. I hope, you know, other than the final score, I hope they had a good time. No, no, but, no. Um, yeah, it, was, it was all good. We, I enjoyed, it. I enjoyed it the first half. We, we played well uh, for the first half. And then I think it's just, you know. Yeah, we, we were, it was kind of close-ish. We, we had doubled yeah. up on y'all for in the first half and then, you know. But anyway, I hope you all have a better game tonight or this weekend and um, all goes well. So this is the part of the show where you know what we do here. We ask you to rep your city. Let us know where you are coming or you are watching us from. It's usually a race. Usually kind of the Midwest hits clicks in first. Sometimes we get the West Coast. Sometimes we get uh, New York City area. So let us know where you are watching from. Rep your city, your state, your zip code, your area code, your country, however you want to let us know where you're watching us from. And not only that, Tag a friend, go tap somebody on the shoulder and be like, y'all need to come on in this house and, and fellowship with us because we've got a lot to get to tonight. Yeah. We've been going down the rainbow pathway. You know, I always talk about each of colors. So we've been kind of breaking that down color by color. Um, but we've got a lot of other stuff to get to, some stuff in the news that I want to talk about with you um, as well. So go ahead and start letting us New York. All right, New York City. Yes, I love it. Thank you, Dee, for, for watching and letting us know you're in the, in the in New York City. We've got Decatur, Illinois. There's the Midwest. Jacksonville. Oh, so Florida. All right, Joanne, thank you so much for watching. So if you've been watching, we have been, we've done, we're doing our kind of eat the color tour <clears throat> of the of the rainbow. And we've done green foods, we've done yellow foods, we've done red foods, we've done blue slash purple foods. Mm -hmm. So today, or tonight, we are, and this is perfect timing. Look at this, we're doing orange foods. I love it. That just dawned on me. Yep. And I didn't I didn't get the memo. I should have worn orange. I want my orange, you know, I already yeah, so yeah, I love it. Perfect. You know, I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. So we're going to talk about the benefits of orange foods. And, you know, again, this this is kind of like a soap opera. You remember how you could like watch back in the day? I know I'm dating myself, but like you could not watch a soap opera for like, I don't know, three years and you tune back in and you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's so and so and she's sleeping. Right around the day. You know, like you already know what's going on. Same thing here. Like if you if you've missed everything or you, if you've seen only one, guess what? Foods, fruits and vegetables are good for you. They prevent cancer and disease. So we're going to, it's a kind of wash and repeat, but we're still going to get into it and kind of talk a little bit about some ways you can prepare some orange foods as well. And we have so, a cautionary tale, don't we? Uh, as we to why do. fruits and vegetables. We do have some cautionary, a cautionary tale. And, and I've got, got some, some news from the um, nutrition in the news, I guess you could call it. 
Right. Um, that we're going to talk about a little bit. Kind of, it kind of all comes together. Um, but just you know, I'm here. My job is to give you the information to help you make choices and decisions that hopefully improve and lengthen your life. So, that being said, let's pull up the slide, please, to match your your shirt there in honor. In honor, we're going to call this the Fam You Show. That's how about we do that? This this is the Fam You episode. <laughs> <laughs> And I love it because orange is actually one of my favorite colors. Um, I, you know, I, orange is, I love it. I think, you know, we're getting into fall, right? In another few, what, two, three weeks, it'll be fall, you know? So Labor Day, I hope you all are going to have a wonderful Labor Day because we're, it's kind of the end of the season, end of the summer, kind of quote unquote unofficial end of the summer. So we've got some orange foods that we're going to talk about. And while he's pulling that up, you know, again, so these all do similar things, but we're going to focus today on orange foods, fruits and vegetables, and um, their role in the body. So we've, as we've done this, we've talked about the name of the chemical that gives, or the plant chemical, the phytonutrient that gives um, the vegetables their color, because those, those colors are what imparts the health benefits, right? So for, there we go. Aren't you glad? I love it. See, y'all, I'm, I'm corny. I like food. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, I mean, just look at that slide like I just want to eat all of that right so um the so what gives these foods their beautiful orange hue um are the it's a uh, beta carotene mm -hmm. is one of them they also have a little bit of lycopene in them as well and so those chemicals give um the the orange hue and something also called lutein as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got apricots, pumpkin, right? We're getting into that time of year where pumpkin is everywhere. I remember I saw a meme a few weeks ago when somebody was like, don't stop talking about pumpkin spice. It's still August. <laughs> like, like, don't rush it. So, you know, we're about to get bombarded with, with pumpkin and pumpkin spice, but cantaloupe, juicy, delicious carrots, turmeric, a spice that I hope yeah. is in your pantry, your, your cabinet, turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antibacterial that gives food a nice a yellowish hue as well. Yep. And so <clears throat> used in, in a lot of, you know, Middle Eastern or Asian dishes. So help if you've not tried turmeric, please, please, please do. Um, sweet potatoes, of course, right? Sweet potato pie coming up. So it's almost that time of year. Um, nectarines, papaya, oranges, peaches, kumquats, orange peppers, tangerines, and persimmon. And of course, this list is not all inclusive. And as we're going through this, please drop in the chat. I'd love to see what your favorites are, right? I, 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 I like pretty much everything on here, but I would love to see what you guys, what your favorites are and a dish that you make with them. So Ellis, I mean, you're, you represent for Team Orange. What's your favorite <laughs> on this list? Um, you, can't well, sweet you can't say sweet potato. No, 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 no. I, you all, being from Florida, I, I'm going to go with, with Florida oranges. And um, my, my, I remember growing up as a kid eating kumquats. Like one of my neighbors had like a tree and we would just eat them, pick them right off the tree and eat kumquats. And I was like, it was just kind of one of those things uh, that you did. And, and and I'm going to echo your point about turmeric. If you have not tried it, it is a fantastic, and it's so good for you that if you're making a stew or anything like that, you just sprinkle some turmeric in there. It does have a yellow color, so you got to be you have to be careful because uh, it will change the color of what what you're putting it in if you put too Making much in there. Finger tips too, get a little yellow. Yes. But it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, it's a root vegetable, right? So it's a, it is. It's and a actually, it's it's so funny you say that. I was in Jamaica a couple of weeks ago and the we were in a, a villa, a private villa, and the, there was a garden, a private garden. And so the chef was showing me the different things in the garden. And it was this tree with these big, you know, big green leaves. And I was like, you know, what's that? And she said, turmeric. And I was like, turmeric. And she said, well, yeah, it's a root. And so, you know, but all you see are the leaves at the top. And I would have never guessed that that was a turmeric plant. So yes, it's definitely, it's, it's a, it's a root um, uh, vegetable. So <clears throat> let's get into kind of, again, some of these things and, you know, again, stop me if you've heard this before, but we're going to go over it. Um, but so what are the health benefits? What do these things do specifically in your body? What do these, these phytonutrients do? So one of the things is blood pressure control. So, so, you know, here's the, here's the, the headline, right? Eating fruits and vegetables helps to decrease 
and prevent the risk for chronic diseases. Chronic diseases are things like heart disease, like the number one things that, that kill people, right? That's why we're harping on this because it's we're talking about lives here. So heart disease, diabetes, inflammation in the body, cancer, all the stuff we don't want. So one of the things, one of the benefits is uh, health is blood pressure control. So the average American, we've talked about this before, how the average American sodium intake is way too high and mm-hmm. the potassium intake is too low. And potassium does things in your body like it plays it uh, plays a role in regulating fluid. It helps nerves to transmit signals and also helps muscle contraction. Your heart, you know, your heart is affected by your potassium levels. So you definitely want to have an adequate supply of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we know that high blood pressure increases the risk for stroke and um one way of increasing your potassium intake if you're if you're relatively low is to eat more fruits and vegetables. And believe it or not, orange foods like you know sweet potatoes and carrots are actually high potassium. People think of of bananas when we talk about potassium, but um, your orange fruits and vegetables are a great source as well. Uh, I see Rowena saying that she's watching from Maryland. Thank you so much for for joining. So. You've also got your your winter squash, which is uh, like your acorn and your butternut. Those are also going to be high in. Um, and I, I, I've just recently, kind of relatively recently, started eating butternut squash. It's delicious. It's it's, it's like it's. I'm, really, I'm gonna check your word for that one. <laughs> you know, it's it's really it's you can kind of season it and almost like a sweet potato. Like it really has a, a mild flavor. And then don't forget the seeds because those are technically fruits because their seeds are inside. You can clean those seeds up and like rinse off the the pulp that the, the the connective tissue that's in there, and season them with however you like and bake them. And they, those are, they are nice and they give, they take on a nutty flavor. Yeah. If you like crunchy snacks, there, there it is. So you kind of get a twofer with that. If you're using the whole um, squash, save those seeds and bake them up and they are delicious. So the, that's, so that's blood pressure control. It also, they also help with your eyes. So your lutein we talked about is one of the chemicals that gives them that color. So ma- macular degeneration is a leading cause of blindness in this in this country, and so these fruits and vegetables help to decrease the risk for cataracts, which is which is a cause of cloudy or blurry vision, mm-hmm. and also age related macular degeneration. So you want to be sure to get those in your diet. So. And here's one this, that I came across because we haven't really talked about this um, as far as what these foods do, but also they contain a high level of vitamin C, yep. which is important for dental health. And I, you know, sometimes I don't, I don't always remember that, but if you have adequate levels of vitamin C, you're less likely to have bleeding gums and loose teeth because vitamin C does play a role in um, collagen formation, which is a connective tissue that helps with wound healing and skin elasticity. Right. <clears throat> so, you know, so, but to be mindful, it's good for your teeth as well. If you want to help keep those healthy gums, definitely add some uh, of those, those, those orange fruits and vegetables as well. So, you know, Ellis, you talked about oranges and that's, you know, that's the kind of the first thing that comes to mind. Um, when you think about orange, right? Because it's a color and a fruit. Right. But I do want to just mention um, whole fruit versus versus juice. And that can go for any of these that you juice, yeah. anything that you juice. Um, particularly if you're juicing it yourself, that's different. But we're talking more about the store-bought um, you know, juices that are out there. People may think they're getting, you know, it's healthy, I'm drinking juice flip that label around and look at the back and see how much sugar is in there. Because remember, these have natural sugars, right? Fructose, fruit sugar. But the added sugars that are oftentimes put in these juices is, you know, it negates any health benefit. So, and also that, not not only that, but when you um, are getting juice, you're not getting the fiber from eating the fruit, which helps with digestion. It helps again with these chronic diseases, helps you feel full. Uh, it can also help regulate blood sugar. So just a little word there about, about juice. But so you, you talked about kumquats. I, I love to hear that because I've actually never had a kumquat. Um, so, you know, being from Florida, do, I mean, do you just, do you just pick oranges and eat them like, like kumquats? Like how accessible <laughs> were oranges? Like this, this fascinates me because I'm like, you just, a few people a few people had trees um yeah if you were you know 
when you're younger, you're a little bit more adventurous. And so, uh, you know, we've, I won't say how we got the arches, but we, you know, you know, there may have been a fence climb. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, that's what they're that's what they're there for, right? <laughs> but just saying, yeah, you would just put, pluck it up right off the tree, and and peel it and eat it. I think you know that 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 natural way. And then you know, like I said, my neighbor had the the kumquat tree, so we weren't we didn't have to really climb on that. But it was just kind of like you just, you just kind of knew which ones were were good and, and which Ooh. ones weren't. So you just it was just you just pluck it and you look it and rinse it and. Damn. And bite it. So I, I think we need to, in terms of especially with this with this series and this whole program, we need to encourage our audience to get back to that space to where like so. The other night I, I was I made this big walk full of just stock full of vegetables. I mean we had yellow squash and zucchini, which is another form of squash, and then we had every color of peppers: orange peppers, uh, red, yellow. Um, I had some jalapenos, some fresh garlic, just onions, uh, scallions, the whole night, just all in there. And I made my son come downstairs to help me cook, right? And I showed him how to chop vegetables and the whole night. But he was asking, and every time I would cut, it didn't matter, different color, hey, eat it fresh, like eat it raw. So that way when you're cooking, you know what it tastes like in its raw form. So that way it's easier to mix it and blend it with other things because you know what it what it tastes like so and he was like what does that taste like i said well cut him a piece here put this and i said it's crunchy it's a little sweet you know and and the the there's not a big difference in the pepper you know flavor profile but just understanding that eating that fresh food no you know your body and your mouth will get used to it over time so just really try it i definitely say when you're cooking just pop it in your mouth yeah, no, that's that's actually that's great advice. And we know that the longer and I'm so glad you said that, because, of course, the longer that we cook um, our, our fruits and vegetables, if it's a fruit that you're cooking, mm-hmm. you know, you actually lose nutrients that way. And I, I know I remember years ago, I remember hearing uh, something about the way black people make collard greens, you know, because we cook collard greens to death. But for me, it's a balance because I'm not going to eat something that's too chewy. We talked about kale a few weeks ago, right? How yeah. you can massage it in oil, oil and or lemon juice to kind of soften it up and break it down a little bit. Like if it's too raw, it's just it's not, you know, palatable. It's not pleasant. Yeah. So you have to kind of, you know, have that balance. So if you do tend to like your, your greens a little on the well cooked side, you know, try to balance that out with something else that's not as cooked. Or, or I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not a fan of soggy greens. I like my greens a little a little firm. I like so you the, like your little, little bite to them. A little, yeah. a little firm, I, a little yeah. I like mine kind of cooked down, but that's that's just kind of how my mom always made them, and you know, that's kind yeah. of what you used to. But speaking of greens, I did want to say um, briefly about one of the before we leave is about anemia. So we talked about vitamin C and yep. and how rich these um, foods are. Vitamin C helps with iron absorption. So any of you out there, particularly you ladies, if you've de- dealt with an anemia in your life. Um, your doctor may have told you, you know, drink, take your iron with some orange juice or something, you know, with, with orange juice, because that helps to your body absorb the the iron. So, you know, if you're thinking of ways to kind of incorporate how to get more of these fruits and vegetables in your diet, one thing you can do is say if you're having a spinach salad, cut some orange um, segments into that because the, the citrus, the vitamin C from the Oranges will help you absorb the iron that's in the spinach. Mm. And not only that, the acid from the from the oranges just kind of helps brighten it. And that that flavor really <clears throat> will be enhanced. So things yeah. like that. You can make spring rolls, you know, practice your knife cuts and slice up those those peppers that, that uh, Ellis was mentioning, cab, carrots and cabbage and so forth, and make you some delicious spring rolls. Um you can make pancakes with, you know, sweet potato. I make a, a um, you, you can add, you know, sweet potato or pumpkin puree into your waffles or pancakes. So mm. that's another source that you can get. Um, grilling your vegetables is a way to get it. Um, you know, making hummus and then eating it with with carrots. So these are all just different ways of getting those those vegetables in there. And I, and I love that you, you know, you talk about Ellis about having your son come cook with you because. Yep. Um, that's just, it's a, it's a way to try to, you know, get that information to him early. So I see Patricia May is watching. Is that my auntie watching from New York? Thank you so much for watching. Um, so we are going to go ahead and I want to get to the, 
um, the news, nutrition in the news, because there are two things I want to share with you that I, I came across here recently. And again, <clears throat> this is you've heard before, but it does bear repeating about how ultra processed foods are not good for us. Right. So there's been a big study that recently was published in, in the British Medical Journal that ultra processed foods have been linked to cancer and early death. And this this study was interesting because it had over 200,000, uh, the U.S. base, it was done in the U.S. and Italy. We'll, we'll talk about the U.S. base portion. But that examined the diets of over, two, over 200,000 men and women for up to 28 years. So okay. this was a large study and it was for a long time. And <clears throat> they found the link between ultra processed foods and colorectal cancer in men which is the third most diagnosed cancer in the United States, but not in women. Um, for women, it was more of that they had um, heart disease and early death. So when we say ultra processed foods, we've mentioned processed foods, what do you mean about ultra processed foods? So those include prepackaged soups, sauces, frozen pizza, ready to eat meals, and foods like hot dogs, sausages, french fries, soda. I'll just think I think like cold cuts uh, would be. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, eat, ready to pretty much things that are ready to eat, ready to eat or ready to heat at meals that you, you know get to the table pretty quickly. Uh, cakes, candies, donuts, ice cream, which you know who doesn't like ice cream, right? So, but you know, like we've talked about before on this show, <laughs> moderation, right? But we're, what what they looked at here was again the length of time and the amount of foods that these people were eating. And one of the, the interesting things that I saw was that they said that people who ate a lot of ultra processed foods, they actually gained two pounds while they were on the diet. So they did kind of a, a the National Institute of Health did a, a study where they had people on ultra processed and, and, and regular or healthy foods, unprocessed. The people who were on the ultra processed diet ate at a faster rate, which like, so they ate faster. And that equated or equaled about an extra 500 calories per day to people who are eating unprocessed foods. So what that means is that like there's, you know, we have cues. Our body is, is you know, our brain is when we're eating, our stomach gets full. It sends information back to the brain unless you know, hey, look, you slow down, you're, you're getting full. So it looks like some of that might be affected by what you're eating. So on average, just the study participants gained two pounds when they were on ultra processed diet or they lost an equivalent amount when they were on the unprocessed diet. So I thought that was very interesting. And they, when they looked at the study as far as why colon cancer was higher in men versus women, what they think the, the difference is there is kind of like for women in general, we think we know the estrogen is protective. Like that's why women don't tend to get heart disease until they're older and go through menopause. So they think that there's a difference you know, due to sex hormones, metabolic hormones, um, obesity rates, things like that. And also they found that women tended to eat healthier ultra processed foods. So there is such a thing. So like yogurt. So women tend to eat more yogurt and some um, some ultra processed foods like whole grain foods that don't have extra uh, sugars or additives. Though women tended to eat more of those and they thought that might have a protective effect as well. So interesting. Just wanted to kind of share that because, you know, that's kind of hot off the press and it doesn't tell us anything we don't know, but <clears throat> just we're another reinforcing, way. right? We're, we're reinforcing, you know, reinforcing the, the thing. It's like rinse and repeat. We're going to continue to bang that drum until we get it. And that's really exactly. understanding that a more plant-based diet is, is going to be healthier. Because you know how many things did I name on that list? I I eat some of those things, so it, it's a it's a it's a process, right? It's not a it's what is it? It's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. So we you know it's hard. It can be a challenge to overcome or change some of these ingrained habits that we have. But when you know better, you do better. And so I wanted to to end tonight. Um, just on a, on a cautionary tale, I was, said we had a cautionary tale. And I don't know how many of you, uh, I haven't seen the movie, but they, they did a movie about Elvis here recently. And the, the actress who, uh, the black actress, I don't, I don't, again, I didn't see the movie. I don't know what role, but she was, a, I think, a blues singer in the movie. Her name, her real name was Shanka Dukura. And she actually passed away suddenly a few months ago, like not long after the movie premiered. 
And she was only 44 years old and she was found at home, deceased by her two young children. And they just released her cause of death and it was heart disease. Mm. At 44, she died from complications from hypertensive and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. In English, what that means is the arteries of her heart were clogged. She had high blood pressure and she likely had a clot, a thrombosis, and, and suffered a massive heart attack. Yeah. And so I read this today, and I just, you know, obviously the sadness about her, it looks like her star was just on the rise. I think she had an album about to come out. Um, she had these two small children. Um, but here is a, a Black woman dying of heart disease at 44. And so I don't know her history. I didn't treat her. Um, but I just know that um, I wanted to share this information with you all. So please, ladies, I'm talking to you. Um, and and I, this was my Facebook post for today. Please, if you're having any symptoms at all, such as indigestion or heartburn, yep. shortness of breath. Because here's the thing. Women don't have heart attacks like men. No, women don't have the same symptoms to a lot of times. And if you're diabetic, you, you could throw all that out the window. So it could just be you're a little bit more tired than you usually are, or you are more short of breath with activity than you usually are. You have swelling in your legs or you have heartburn. Any of these things, please, please, please do not attribute it to the weather, stress, your hormones, your anxiety, your salt intake, like all this other stuff that people, you know, self-diagnose, please go to the doctor, the people who went to medical school, let them listen to your story and evaluate you <clears throat> and make sure that, you know, you could be right. It could be some of those things, but if you're wrong, it could also be very, it could be fatal. And so we want you to please take those symptoms seriously. You know, I tell people all the time, you can't pour from an empty cup. Sometimes you got to take off the superwoman cape and go replenish, go get yourself checked out so that, you know, if you want to be here to for your family, your community, your friends, whoever you serve, you've got to listen, listen to your body, go get it checked out and know your family history. Please, please, please know your family history as much as is possible, as much as is available to you. Um, medicine is going in the direction now we're targeting, you know, we, we have gene therapy, we're, we're, we're using, you know, genetic testing to target and treat diseases differently now. So some of that is, is in, the, in the cardiovascular world as well. So, you know, just know your history, get, you know, I, Thanksgiving every year, I tell people, when you're passing the mass, passing the mashed potatoes, you know, Pass the family history around as well. You know, what did big mama die from? Why did so-and-so get a leg cut off? Like, seriously, because these are things that are that are important, but not always talked about. Um, and we're talking about the whole family history, you know, mental health, physical health, like all of it. It's really important. So I think it's, it's, it's paramount to the survival of, of the families. Because I've seen too many, heard too many horror stories about, um, and, and things that happen in, in people, the families will wait until you get diagnosed. And it's like, oh, yeah, your uncle had that. Right. And so you're like, wait, 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 you could have told me that. And I could have made those changes prior to you know getting this and, and had more preventative me measures. We should still should be taking pre preventative measures. But having that, that history, working with your primary care physician, giving them that history lets them know to look out for certain things, right? Exactly. When they're looking at your blood work, when they're running your labs, they're doing all that stuff. If they know, oh, this person, like for me, I have a family history of prostate cancer. So doc's going to look at my PSA and he's, and he's not just going to look at it as a number. He's going to look at it. Okay. Was there an increase from last year to this exactly. year? So those are type of things that, that they'll do with knowing a family history versus, oh, you're just, you know, you're good kind of, you know, right. or you're a blank slate. And then they're just kind of saying that if you're under four for your PSA, they may not know that you have a family history. So that jump from 1.2 to 2.3 in a year, is it, significant. it could be very significant. And my, he might want to send you to go get a biopsy, even though you're still under that four threshold that they tell you, you need to be under for PSA. So all of those things matter, family history, talk about it at Thanksgiving Center at the table, Pass it, pass some mashed potatoes, pass some history with it. <laughs> oh, there you go. And hopefully, you know, this Thanksgiving, you'll you have a little bit more 
plant-based, healthier plant-based, right? Not these ultra processed foods that we just talked about. But, you know, that's, again, it's a process. <laughs> We're all in it together. We're all here to grow and to get better. Greens so, are plant-based. Green, yeah, greens are, yeah, I'm going to have some greens. Salad, salad is plant-based too, but then by the time you put all the bacon bits and the, the dressing and the cheese and the, yeah. you know, but I'm just saying, people say, oh, it's plant-based and then they kind of, you know, sabotage it. So, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, we cut that egg, cut that, that hard boiled egg on there. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, to the oh corner, Let's go to the corner. Go to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so please be sure to follow me on all social media at Physician in the Kitchen. You guys were quiet tonight. I wanted to see, I wanted to hear what some of your favorite recipes are, but it's not too late. You can always drop it in the chat. Let us know what orange food is your favorite, you know, what recipes or how you like to make it. Um, and so we've got, and I've, don't forget my book, Doc Fix My Plate right there. Doc Fix My Plate. You can get your copy at docfixmyplatebook.com. I'm sure there's an orange food or two in there that you can, that you can use. And um, I'd love if you make any of the recipes in the book, please, please, please be sure to tag me on Instagrams or whatever your social media of choice is. Until next week, happy, sa happy Saturday, happy September, happy Labor Day weekend. Yes. Be safe. Come back and see us next week. Uh, I'm actually going to be going to, my son is an Aggie. He's a North Carolina auntie. And they actually are playing um, North Carolina Central, the big rivalry there, in-state rivalry. And they're actually playing here in Charlotte this weekend. So I'm excited about that. Oh, that's fun. And yes. also we'll have a special guest next week. With that. That's right. You got to tune it's in. Teasing. It's teasing. That's, that's called a tease, y'all. That's called a tease, a tease. right? That's what we try to hook you to come back in. So, but have a great week, everyone. Enjoy your, your holiday weekend. Be safe. Take care. Y'all take care.